I had to call the national food writer to tell me where to find local Westchester hidden gems. Yeah. <laughs> this is Jeff Gordonier. Jeff is the food and drinks editor for Esquire magazine. He's also lived in Westchester for close to two decades. After, you know, a couple of hours of writing, I'm like, you know what I'm craving? Shawarma. <laughs> I'm going to go up the street. I think I'll stop writing now. I've earned it. Jeff gets that shawarma and plenty more here from Amal Sulman at Irvington Delight. We started as an American deli. We never, you know, we had it in mind just to add hummus and falafel. They started leaving notes. Please get rid of the grocery. We could get that anywhere. Get rid of the coal cut. We want Middle Eastern. And by that summer, I would say six to eight months, we became Middle Eastern. I remember coming in here and thinking, Okay, so that's cool, some Middle Eastern food. You know, I love shawarma. Ordering a few things, taking a, f a few bites, and being kind of gobsmacked, kind of blown away. Like, this is way higher level than I expected. You know what I mean? I mean, the hummus was just better. A secret to a good hummus is to go through the whole process. It's a three-day process. You cannot take it out of the can or of the jar, and you expect it to be creamy and tasty. You have to go through the process, three days process. And I was most clear with the grape leaves. I mean, I love stuffed grape leaves. So is that your go-to order, grape leaves? Yeah, I always get the hummus. stuffed grape leaves. But the thing is, you know, around New York, you get them at all different kinds of restaurants, and they're often, there's no better word for it. They're slimy a lot of times, right? They seem to have come out of a can. It starts by picking up our leaves from our own vines in our yard, and we blanch them to clean them and to make it easier to roll. You feel like it was stuffed by a human hand as opposed to some robot. And as soon as I had Amal's grape leaves, I was just, I, I, it was like I, I, you know, woke up in a different universe. It was like, oh, this is what they're supposed to taste like. That's my recipe. I learned from my mother, my mother-in-law. Mmm. These are not the grape leaves I'm used to eating. That's the thing. They're just completely mm. different. They, they, you know, they represent what they're supposed to taste like. We put all kinds of spices. They're like little cigars, you know, the, the rice and the spices are compressed, so it makes a really perfect bite. And so when it's tightly wrapped like that, you get that little snap, almost like a hot dog with a casing. You yeah, know? that's well put, yeah. We stack them in a nice big pot, very tight and we put heavy weight on top, like a, a heavy plate or two plates to keep them down. There's actual spice inside with the rice, so, you know, it has flavor. It doesn't just taste like, you know, some kind of rice pudding inside. I put from salt and pepper, of course, cinnamon. I put turmeric, I put cardamom, the seven spice mix. The sauce on the shawarma is fantastic. What makes it really is the garlic sauce that we make. It's got a nice little garlicky kick there. Yeah, totally. Mm. But I think this speaks to the point that, you know, good food doesn't have to be pretentious. No. It doesn't have to be expensive either. You know what's weird is sometimes I'll, on my Instagram people are like, wait a second, you go to Noma in Copenhagen and you go to Osteria Francescana in, in Modena, Italy, etc. And, and then you just get lunch like at this shawarma place? I'm like, yeah. Yes. I, I, I'm, I, I, well, I don't understand why people think there's a disconnect. Like, I, I don't just eat at fine dining places all the time by any means. Different meals for different moments. Yeah, and I, I mean, it's just, it's just like, you know what really draws me is when you feel there's, um, there's a sense of soul. Like, it, yes. it really comes down to, you know, are the people making the food making it with love and integrity and soul? And you can sense that. You can sense that in the, at Noma, and you can sense that at Irvington Delight. You just feel like there's a mind at work and there's a heart at work. Like, I think when I talk to Amal about the food here, she's like, you know, this is this means so much to me. And I think it means a lot to her to, to convey it to her customers, to say, like, this is where I come from. This is what I'm about. You know, join me. You brought up Instagram. I love your Instagram because kind of what you were saying, you're this guy who's traveled the world to eat. You've interviewed all these famous chefs and you've eaten at all these great restaurants. And then half your Instagram is just Westchester restaurants. Yeah. It's like this, it's amazing. It's like, you know, and I'm sure for people who 
don't know that you're this Westchester guy, they're probably like, wait, he's posting from a place in Nyack, New York? What yeah. Is the, what's going on there? He's posting yeah, from I Irvington? Don't, I mean, I don't live in Brooklyn. I don't live in Manhattan. You know, I think people assume that all the food writers don't do. Don't they all live in Brooklyn? They all live in Brooklyn. <laughs> no, we don't. I, I live up here, and I have since the year 2000. And um, on the days when I'm not traveling, in fact, it's, it's kind of a bargain. On the days when I'm not traveling, I'm basically here as much as I can taking care of my children, you know, um, making their breakfast, making their school lunches, <laughs> making dinner for them, taking them, you know, driving them to school. And taking and, them to local restaurants. Yeah, and taking them to local restaurants, you know. There's a bounty of great restaurants in Westchester. And, and you're and a guy it, who has that, that point of reference. You've traveled the world, so it's like, for you to say a place like this is good, it's not like, you know, I mean, not that other people can't enjoy this, but you're coming at it with just a certain level of knowledge where it, it's like the stamp of approval. I guess, I mean, there are some mediocre spots in the county and there are, you know, anywhere you live, but if you put a little effort into it in this county, I mean, there, there are, I can think of 30 or 40 places that are really terrific, you know, as you know. I think a lot of people think s suburbs only have strip malls and yeah. very basic restaurants, but I feel like there's a changing face of the suburbs. A lot of now immigrants are going to the suburbs. They're not going to the cities because it's, it's a cheaper entry point, whatnot. And so you're finding a more diverse array of eats, places like this. Westchester County is incredibly diverse. People don't necessarily know that. Yeah, there is this kind of stereotype, you know, of suburbs as white bread and dull. That stereotype is held basically by people who haven't had the experience of, you know, eating around the county. I mean, when I first moved to this area, um, you know, 18 years ago, um, there was at times a pronounced lack of great places to get, you know, to get an interesting dinner. You could get a, a perfectly decent dinner, but maybe it wasn't, uh, you know, wasn't quite the level you're seeing now. But now you see it all over the place. And we reap the benefits.